I am not a role model. I am not paid to be a role model. I am paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Parents should be role models. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. Remember that commercial? 1993, Sir Charles Barkley, and at the time it was a big firestorm. The idea or even the suggestion that sports figures shouldn't be considered uh, for children of America the very role models they should aspire to be. Well, now take that and I'll go back, go 20 years later here. The idea here uh, that years later we look at sports figures the same way so much has changed here and we still grapple the same issue in different ways. Is it too much to expect sports figures in the public eye that's part of the compact to forget about being holier than thou, just borderline morally upstanding guys? Or do you put them in such high regards here, it's basically setting them up to fail? Now take a look at just some of the recent examples. I'm not going to go too far. Joe Paterno. I mean, Penn State, they were the school that did everything right here. Remember the Catholics versus the convicts when they played Miami in that championship game? Well, we all know what happened in that cover-up at that rape scandal. Tiger Woods, picture of perfection, the dream for any uh, product that uh, you wanted this guy to market it for you until the sex scandal made his image come crumbling down. Michael Vick. Okay, uh, the idea that this guy was uh, quarterback 2.0, the new version of it, and then he ended up being involved in a legal dog fighting ring, although, you know, he has kind of turned his uh, life around and has certainly uh, seemed a different human since he's come out of prison. And then, guys, you talk about the Armstrongs of the world, and you look at Major League Baseball, the greatest class, arguably, since the first class of the Hall of Fame, and not one person gets in, all because they cheated and got rewarded for it. Um, do you think we've turned a corner, or do you think too much is put on the modern-day athlete in terms of expectations? Well, with social media and cell phones that could take pictures, we, we talked about that before, it's hard to stay out of trouble. I, I'm sure if Mickey Mantle played now, he wouldn't last two seasons mm. before TMZ destroyed this guy. Ah, oh, there he is, drunk out every night. But you know what? You're right, but you look at the DiMaggio's or, or in the, the Derek Jeter's of today. Mm -hmm. We're not asking these guys, you know, to, you know, to walk little old ladies across the street. Don't have dog fighting rings. Don't um, <laughs> cheat uh, and, and make yourself millions. Try and win on your own merits here. I, I can go up and down the line here. You know, don't be involved with sexual assault with her. Don't drunk drive, you know. It. It. Is it too much to ask or no? No, Richard. Uh, Derek Jeter, you bought him up. He is the last bastion of hope. If he somehow is involved where he tests positive for something or gets a DWI, he's been smart enough to not get married, so we can't judge him for, for cheating, <laughs> right? Uh, and I don't mean that my By wife is watching. By the way, he watching. just said that, right. and not me. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, no, the wife is. But what yeah. I mean is when he's with aesthetically pleasing dates, he yeah. could go from girl to girl without anybody saying, that Derek Jeter is like an Alex Rodriguez. You make an ad with Visa, right? Yeah. Or MasterCard, what, what, whatever. What, 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 what was the term for pretty? Uh, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. yeah. I like that. It's, it's, like, it's a classy <laughs> show. So, yeah. It's a classy show. Well, who do we have left? We we have Tebow, we have the Mannings, we have Jeter. There's still are some good guys out there, but it seems like the bad outweigh the good, particularly during the steroid But there's, era. A, there's mm. a difference, which is I don't think we hold our, our sports heroes up as heroes in the real world all that much. We don't expect them to be squeaky clean. It's when, when you have a Michael Vick or you have somebody who behaves badly off the field, a, a Tiger Woods, it's, you scratch your head because you're like, this is somebody who has everything and they still engage in this behavior that we would frown on. To me, it's actually the, the more painful stuff is the Lance Armstrong or the Barry Bonds or the Roger Clemens because these are people who are talented and probably would have been successful at least to some extent on their own and then they cheated to be even better and that, that goes to the heart of their role as athletes. I, I don't think we hold athletes up as role models the way we used to. I, I, I think we do and I think we yeah, always think will. We will as well. I mean, I mean <laughs> say it ain't so, Joe. You know, Shoeless Joe Jackson. You know, 1919. Helping, helping throw the world. No, as I say, it's been going on forever. Say it ain't so, Joe. It's. Uh, I think we're always going to hold these athletes up. I think what's what's uh, worse now is that we're losing faith in so many of our institutions, and sports is one of them. And I think that's a major thing. That's a big hit on baseball with its steroids. But we're losing faith in business. We're losing faith in politics. We're losing faith in athletes. I will say that's the a big one blow. thing after I heard from a lot of people, whether they intend it or not, since the Armstrong thing is, I remember after baseball, Dominic. A lot of people couldn't care less if the guys were juicing. They just wanted to see 500-foot home runs. They liked Chase with McGuire and Sosa. They didn't care what they were doing. 
People are so tired of trying to figure out who's cheating and who's not, they want a level game. And they're willing to see a 400-foot home run instead of a 500-foot one. They're willing that the, the guy will lead the league in home runs with 40-something instead of 70-something. I think people are finally tired of cheating. And I'm not sure they would have said that 10 years ago. It bothered me, but I always felt I was in the minority because people just wanted to see the comic book guys with, you know, biceps, you know, 25 inches big, you know. I, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I think things have changed. I, I don't know. All I can tell you on this note, Richard, is that... Thanks for picking and, me up on that. Go and, ahead, yeah. And yeah. addressing uh, your point, Andrew, I, I don't care how much money a celebrity has. I don't care how famous they are. And I've met quite a few. They have the same problems. And I'm talking about Michael Jackson right now, who I met on several occasions. They have the same problems that you and I have, sometimes even more, in terms of self-esteem, insecurity issues. And, and they may be on a stage performing... 400,000 people. But I think most people realize that. I, I don't think there's the sort of celebrity idolization that there used to be in terms of I think assuming that they're squeaky clean. In, any, fool, yeah. any fool with a camera. I'm yeah. not talking about Kim Kardashian, but any fool with a, with a camera, no, that, you know, why, can be a star. Don't, that's why you we know? don't idolize well, them, because her, we see them well, all Richard, the time. Richard, yeah. can you please answer this but, for me? What is her claim to fame? Well, you don't need to have talent anymore. But, but what is hers? Aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. It, it, right. she, she made a movie. <laughs> she made a movie. She made a movie. Yeah, we know what type of movie she made, from what I hear. But do you, you, you cover these guys. Sure. Do you think that there's a reality check that instead of fighting about the, the new age and the new media, that this is the reality and it's part of the compact? You know, hire a driver for Christ's sakes. You want to get loaded? Hire a driver. Don't get in the car. I think guys get it now. I, maybe they're starting to get it. You're going to cheat. You're going to get caught. And no one's going to feel bad for you. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to get a second. I have a feeling or maybe a delusional, naive hope like my friend uh, Manti Teo, right? But I have a feeling that the public finally cares. Well, maybe they didn't. Uh, do you buy that at all or no? As long as you look at the Nielsen's every year and the highest rated program is the Super Bowl, these guys feel they have an air of entitlement. They could do whatever they want. But the league takes the, the necessary precautions here. You mentioned drunk driving before. The Jets and Giants, you have a number you can call, and they'll keep it anonymous. I'm at a bar. I need a ride. But I, even I take can't the league. Home. But even take the NFL. Mm -hmm. They now have cracked down on moral clauses, where before, please, right? Maybe forget their motivation for it, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They're doing something about bad actors. You're suspended if you smack a woman around. You're suspended if you drunk drive. You, you pay a price in the pocketbook, and baseball finally has been shamed to have actual real drug policy. They're going to actually have HGH testing this year. Forgetting the motivations, and even if they're all for cynical reasons, I think they're worried about the viability of their products long term if you keep having the police blotter being the lead story in Sports Center, no? There's, a, there's an interesting, uh, I, I did some work with an insurance company years ago that developed a policy after Tiger Woods uh, incident that was first called Tiger Woods Insurance. It, was reputa it's re it is reputational risk insurance, a company called DeWitt Stern, old line insurance company in yeah. New York. And it was to insure advertisers that had invested tens of millions of dollars in the reputations of these clients. And that insurance now exists. I mean, that shows you how much <laughs> buy-in people have to these personalities. Unbelievable. Hey, Joe, thank you very much for Richard, joining this clown you. car. I appreciate it. And what did you say, aesthetically pleasing? Aesthetically pleasing, yeah. I like that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. You're well, aesthetically we, pleasing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know, it's a value. <laughs> when we come back here, Whoa. we are going to turn to politics. Hey, now. Aesthetically How's pleasing. How's the public in? Uh, right now, they are with aesthetically pleasing people. No, they're holed up here at their retreat for the next three days. And um, they're not playing parties. They're figuring out their next political move here because the next four years of this president are about to start and they have to figure out will it be like the last four or do they have something else in mind? We'll talk about that after this.